Good morning. Welcome to Morning Cup of Jesus. Oh, taste and see that the Lord is good. I hope y'all having a blessed day so far. It's Friday. Without further ado, let's get right into it, shall we? Father God in heaven, it's in the name of the Lord Jesus. I thank you, Lord, for this day, Lord. I thank you, God, that uh, every day is great, Lord God, with you. And even though, Lord, we go through some things throughout our days, Lord God, even though we seem like we have some bad days, Lord, or some mm, some um, some not so desirable, not so favorable days, Lord God, you're with us in every single one of them, God. I thank you that you're with us in every single day, Lord God. I thank you, God, that you never leave us and you never forsake us, Lord God. I thank you, God, that you give us strength when we are weak, Lord God, and you lift us up when we are down, Lord God. I thank you, God, that you would that you correct us, Lord God, when we're going astray, Lord God. I thank you, God, that you rebuke us, Lord God, when we're living in a way that's contrary to you, Lord God, and your will and your way, Lord. Father in heaven, I thank you for the people you place in our lives, Lord. Help us, God, to uh, uh to recognize when when someone is sent by you, Lord God, and help us to to take heed to to the reason that you sent them, Lord God. Don't let us reject them, Lord. Don't let us reject your help, Lord God. And don't let us reject your word if they bring it, Lord, whether we like it or not, God. In Jesus' name, amen, 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 amen. All right, today's scripture coming from uh, 2 Samuel, chapter, 2 Samuel, Samuel, <clears throat> chapter 1. It's just three verses, 25, 26, and 27. <clears throat> and it says, this is David. He says, oh, how the mighty have fallen in the midst of the battle. Jonathan was slain in your high places. I am distressed for you, my brother Jonathan. You have been very pleasant to me. Your love to me was wonderful, surpassing the love of women. How the mighty have fallen and the weapons of war perished. God bless the readers the hearers, and the doers of his holy word. Good morning, Mama Kath. I see you on there. 
That's Tariah's song too. <laughs> Thank you. <clears throat> um, whew, it's a lot. I don't know. I got a whole bunch of stuff wrote down. Y'all didn't know this for so long. But I do I do want to clarify something. Some people claim that this passage implies that David had some type of uh sexual feelings for Jonathan. They're wrong. The people who claim that they are wrong. And the Bible tells us uh um um I'm gonna get to the script. Proverbs 18 24 says there is a friend who sticks by closer than a brother. Talking about a flesh and blood brother. And even and and and, and, and scripture even says in the day of adversity, don't go way over there to your brother. Go to your neighbor who's nearby. And and, and David is simply talking about Jonathan is a very close friend, a very a one of his maybe his best friend. And that's why he's saying that he loves um Jonathan even more than his his lust. For women, you know what I'm saying. We was in when I lived in Mississippi, we had a phrase that we spoke. I'm not gonna say it because it consists of words I don't really use. Um, it's bros before it rhymed with bros. Fill in the blank. H H O's. But uh, anyway, that's what we used to say, and all, all that said, all that meant was we we um we 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 put our our our, our buddies, our best friends, our pals, our homies. Or whatever you know, our brothers, uh, you know, one we put them before we put before women. That's all it was, you know. We put them before women. Even um, man, even when you was in a relationship, you still your your partners they came they came before your 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 feet before your lady. You know what I'm saying? It just that's just how that's how it was when I was growing up. That's that's that phrase that we had, and I think that David is saying the same thing about Jonathan. He you know, David had many women, even his son Solomon had many women. And, you know, because they were kings. A king can have more than one woman. You know, they can have wives and concubine, concubines and uh, you know, they can that's how they that's how they roll. You know what I'm saying? But he was saying here that my love for you is is is, is deeper and different than the love for a woman, than a love, than a lust, lust that I got for all these women. He said, I let I heard some guys say, I'll let all this stuff go just to have you back. You know what I'm saying? I, and, I, and I'm thinking that uh, David felt the same way about Jonathan when, when Jonathan and Saul died. You know what I'm saying? Uh, this this, uh, this passage is saying that even though David loved many women and enjoyed them, his love for his friend was much deeper. Uh, we go through many trials in life. Sometimes family will, will, uh, will help, but sometimes family will let you struggle you know why because whether they help or, or or let you struggle whether they help you or hurt you they still family you they say you can dis you can't disown your family no matter how bad your brother sister cousin mama dad uncle auntie niece nephew no matter how bad they treat you they're still your family you can't stop being your family now. No matter how they, no matter how they treat you, no matter how much bad blood is between you all, they're still your family. It, no matter what, if they help you, when you, when you, no matter if they're uh, millionaires, you know, filthy rich, and you say you just need twenty dollars you know, for a ride to work or catch a Uber or something, you know what I'm saying? Uh, uh, until you get paid tomorrow, if they don't and they don't help you, no matter whether they help you or not, they're still your family because that's family now uh, uh a, a true friend is not like that see family gonna be family forever friends can come and go you see a true friend i ain't look up the definition of the word friend but we know what a friend is a, a true friend will always be there uh if they really your true friend now, now I want to tell you, cause God is saying this to me. I mean, I got I got two things mixed in one. God is saying, and I saw this yesterday. God says, "No weapon formed against you will prosper." That's what God says. Now He doesn't say the weapons will not form. I want to tell you that this morning. God does not say that the weapons will not form. He just says that those weapons will not prosper. And if you have a true friend, that true friend is going to stick with you until you get the victory. When those weapons, when those weapons form against you and uh, and and and, uh, and you seem like 
may all hope is lost. That friend is going to be right there with you to help you get the victory. That friend is going to be right there with you until until you get the victory. If he or she is a true friend, when God does not remove your your red sea of troubles, your 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 red sea of troubles. You know what? And he splits the red sea and say, "No, walk down through there. You need this." When God don't get rid of your troubles, but instead he just split them in half and say, walk down through there because I need you to go through there and see some things. I need you to look up and see some things on the left. I need you to look up and see some things on the right. I want you to see how these things are surrounding you, but I want you to keep your focus on moving forward through there. Don't look back and turn around. Don't look back. Don't look at what's behind you. Don't look at what's coming towards you, but I want you to keep moving forward. When God says that, guess what? He sends a friend. He sends a friend who is going to accompany you, a friend who is going to walk with you, a friend who is going to pray with you, a friend who is going to encourage you with scripture, a friend who is going to rebuke you if you're trying to disobey the word of the Lord. That's what God does. Let me tell you this. We can always count on Jesus to be our friend. I know you knew I was going to say that. We can always count on Jesus to be our friend. There's a but. But. He often shows up in the form of a person we can trust. Often. Not all the time. Often. You know, Jesus often shows up in the form of a person who we can trust. Shoot, I'm going to be even bold to say that uh, God often speaks to us in, 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 in the voice of a person who is known. Do you know what I'm saying? Um, uh, mm, quick example. When I'm doing, when I'm, when I'm working on something electrical, um, a voice that I hear is my electrical instructor, uh, Mr. Grant, David Grant. I, if I'm doing something, I hear, I, I, I hear stuff and I, I'm, and I'm hearing instructions on what to do while I'm doo -doo -doo, checking stuff, you know, putting my meter on and doing, I hear his voice tell me to say something. I know that it's the voice of God because it may not be something that he has said. You know, it may not be a, a words that came out of his mouth before. But I know that it's God speaking some electrical knowledge to me or bringing back to my remembrance something that I read in my book and it's just through a familiar voice. God speaks to my voice, some, to myself sometimes. You know what I'm saying? Um, so so God, what I'm saying is God speaks to us through the, through the voice of, of, of others and he shows himself to us through the person of others as well. God, God sends you some help. He sends you a friend. Jesus is going to show up right there. And you can tell it's them because what they're saying, what they're talking about, what they're encouraging you to do, what they're trying to get you to do, what they're trying to get you to realize lines up with the word of God. See, it lines up with the word of God. Um, we can count on Jesus to, to be our friend. But when he shows up inside somebody else uh, who, who, who we don't want to help us, are we going to reject? When he shows up in somebody, if say for instance, one of your one of your friends that you somebody that you that you're fond of, somebody that you like, come and say something to you. Come and quote a scripture to you. Uh man, don't lean to your own understanding, bro. Look, sister, don't lean to your own understanding. You need to trust in God for this one. And then somebody who you don't like come say the same thing. Hey, look, don't lean to your own understanding. You need to trust in God for this and trust you what well, you're gonna reject. You know what I'm saying? The one who, who you don't like or don't, you know, who you're not friends with or somebody who's a, a stranger or something. I, what I what I try not to do is reject the word of God, no matter who it's coming from. I wish more people around me spoke the word of God. You know what I'm saying? Instead of um, opinions or how they feel about something. I, I feel like encouragement and all that stuff is good, but I like to hear the word of God. I want to. That way I know God is the one who sent you. If you're saying something that ain't lined up with the Bible, I'm, I got to go ask God, did he send you? Yeah, I got to go say, Lord, did you send them earlier today or yesterday? God, is that what you're saying? I got to go to God with it. But if you bring in the word of God and 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 and, 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 it's, and it's something that I'm already praying to, to God about, I'm praying for an answer in that situation. I know that God has sent you as the friend who's going to help me. A friend in need is a friend indeed, is what they say. Um, so let's be thankful for those people whom God sends. Let's also be thankful for the ones he sends that we do not want to help us. See, let's not make the assumption. I'm trying to 
get rid of this alarm for a guy's buzzer. Let's not make the assumption that we can do it better on our own. We're better off by ourselves, doing it by ourselves. Let's not let's not uh let's not make that wrong assumption that we can do it ourselves, that we don't need help from a friend, or that we don't need anybody to do anything for us. Or you know, you know how we get the big head. You know how some people say, "Man, I can do this. I've done this before. I've seen this done." And I say we because sometimes we do things the way we want to do them. I was just telling you about um, uh, I was just telling somebody about how uh. Balaam went and um uh went went to Balak. Balak told paid him to 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 curse the children of Israel. He blessed them like one or two or three times. Then when he saw that God wanted to bless the children of Israel and not curse them, he just blessed them on his own. He didn't even go to God about it that time. He blessed them on his own. So sometimes we might get the big head and say, "Well, God helped me the first two times in this situation." This third time, I'm going to do the same thing that he told me to do the first two times. That might not be the case. God may send somebody with some different instructions. So you got to be cautious not to let your own understanding, your own thoughts avoid out uh, the, the the words that God sends to you through the through the lips of one of your friends or or, or a messenger who is not your friend. Uh, <clears throat> that's not that's not assuming we can do it on our own. We uh and, and and check this out. Get yourself some friends who follow Jesus. I know I preached about friends, friend, friends with benefits. What was the name of that sermon? Friends with benefits, and I talked about this. Uh, and I'm went more. I went more into de- more in depth, more in the detail. But get yourself some friends who follow Jesus. Get yourself some friends who pray for you. Get yourself some friends who study the Word of God. Get yourself some friends who live the Word of God. If your friends is uh, if your friends are, are 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 speaking into your life but they are omitting Jesus, man, that advice ain't hitting on nothing. If your friends telling you to read this, read that, read this, read that, and they ain't ever telling you to read a scripture, that ain't hitting on nothing. Now some books have scriptures in them, and that's I mean, so they may give you a Joyce Meyer book. Or a uh, I don't know a uh, uh, Bishop T D Jake's book or uh, somebody who's a book that's full of scriptures. You need some word of God in your life. If your friends are not feeding you the word of God, I can't really say that they're your friends unless they're not saved. And I talked about that too. I said if your friends are not saved, man, you need to help them get saved before they draw you away from God. They might they ain't, they're not going to cause you to be unsaved. When you saved, you can't. Uh, be unsaved when God saves you. You can't be unsaved, but they can cause you to live to uh stop having faith in God, stop believing, or start doubting God. Or they can cause you to start doing some things, adding some things to your lifestyle that's uh contrary of the uh, uh, of, of of the of the nature of Christ. They can start making you do some things that just not Christ like. So if your friends are not saved, they're not sending you scripture, they're not praying with you, they're not praying for you, they're not following Jesus, they're not studying the word of God, you need to help them get saved first. You need to help them get saved first, but you can't allow them to just continue to be in your life and feed you, feed you worldly stuff, and you ain't feeding them any spiritual stuff. Now I say that and I stand on that, because a lot of us, Think that and I've and I've been reading scriptures. Uh man, I've been reading scriptures. I gave some to Misha and Sariah. Uh about uh how God said, Hey man, if they worship the mother gods, don't let them be around you. God said, get out the midst of them people. He if 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 they're if they if they are influencing you with their gods, get from around them. Your purpose is to influence them with your God. Your purpose is to influence your friends and your associates with Jesus. Your purpose is to is to speak Jesus, to live Jesus, to follow Jesus, to, to represent Jesus. Not to say, well, let me under, let me see. You, your purpose is not to go and find out about their religion, their lifestyle, and, and then start doing what they are doing. The strip, the scripture strictly forbids us from doing that. He says, get from around them. Don't marry them. Don't give your children to their children. What I look like giving my daughter's hand in marriage to a man who believes in a different God, who worships another God, I know that she has to follow her husband. So I know that she's going to go down the path that's not a path to salvation. So and we and so we have to use wisdom when it comes to 
the people who we associate with, the people who we uh, let into our friend circle, the people who we uh, let into our lives, our hearts, and the people who we have in our minds and, and in our homes. Because if they're not uh, if they're not in line with Jesus Christ, they're not on Jesus' side, they're not on our side. I hate to tell you, you just got to lure them over there some kind of way to Jesus' side, but at the whole time, keep your guard up so that they don't lure you away from Jesus Christ. You hear me? I know I've said a lot, man, but I just want to tell you, man, that uh, God sends us a friend. That friend is Jesus. He may show up in the form of somebody else, you know, but he's always there. He'll never leave you. He'll never forsake you. The weapon's going to form against you, but they will not prosper. The Red Sea going to raise up the high walls above you, but guess what? It's not going to crush down and drown you. Even the fire is going to be kindled against you. There's three of y'all standing in the fire. The fire is kindled against you. It's going to be a fourth man in the fire. And that man is the son of God. And he will not even, he going to bring you up out of there. You're not going to even smell like smoke when you come out. That's the type of friend that he is. Put your trust in him. Amen. Thank you, Lord, for this word, God. Thank you, God, that you are our friend. Thank you, Jesus, that you are our friend. And, and, a, and, a, and a friend in need is a friend indeed, Lord Jesus. We thank you for being there in our times of need. We thank you, we thank you, Jesus, that we <clears throat> we don't even really know when we're in need. We just know our wants. We we know what we desire. We don't know what's a need for us. We may feel like, well, I, I feel like I need uh, a certain amount of money to do something. But you know that we don't need that thing we're trying to buy. We may feel like we need a certain meal, but you know that we don't even need that meal because you got another meal coming, Lord. We may feel like we need this promotion, or we need that car, or we need that job, or we need that house, but you know what's best for us. And so because you are our friend, you provide what we need, Lord God. And I thank you. You are our friend indeed. God, show us, show us, God, Show us who you are speaking through. Show us who you are, are using, God, to help us. Show us who you're using to help us, God. And show us, give us spiritual ears so we can hear your words clearly, Lord, and that we can understand, God. Give us wisdom so that we don't reject you, Lord God, when no matter what form you come in, Lord God. And God, above all things, help us do your will, God. Let your will be done. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 All right. That's it for Morning Cup with Jesus. If the Lord is willing, we're going to be right back here tomorrow morning around the same time. Amen. Oh, taste and see that the Lord is good. God bless you. Have a blessed weekend. Thank you.